Hi, my name is Joe Walco. I'm from Lenco Marine. We specialize in trim tabs. And today we're going to be doing an installation on this 23-foot Albury Brothers project boat. We have our 12-inch by 12-inch edge mount trim tabs. We have our electromechanical actuators. And then we have all of the mounting brackets that we're going to use to uh, put the trim tabs on this vessel. We're going to connect to our new all-in-one switch. We're going to use our extension harnesses to uh, make sure that we have enough length of wire to connect them. And then we have a couple simple hand tools that we're going to use to perform the installation. I have the drill already outfitted with our 3 16 drill bit, which is the proper drill bit size for the fasteners that we use. We have a driver, then a couple hand tools. We have a Phillips screwdriver, a straight screwdriver, a couple half inch wrenches, a half inch ratchet. We have a straight edge so that we can ensure that when we install the tabs on the vessel, that they're going to be installed properly. And then on the back of the table, we have some sealant. Anytime that we drill a hole below the water line of the vessel, we want to make sure we seal those fasteners so no water can enter into the hull. All right, we're going to begin the uh, trim tab installation on the port side of this vessel. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the swim platform out of the way and give us a little room to work in here. OK, so now we have our swim platform removed. We're going to apply some tape to the transom. It's going to make it easier for us to put some marks on there to determine where we're going to put the trim tab. And as we drill holes, it's going to help to prevent from us damaging the gel coat. The first mark that we're going to make on here, we're going to scribe a line 3 eighths of an inch up from the running surface. We want the bottom of the hinge knuckle to be mounted 3 eighths of an inch up from the running surface so that when the tab is fully retracted, it doesn't hit your trailer bunks. Or if you dry store your boat, we want to make sure that it doesn't hit the forklift when they pick up your boat. All right, we've temporarily assembled our tab so that we can dry fit it to the transom and mark the hole locations where we're going to, to drill to mount the tab. Now, normally we would recommend that you mount the tab about four inches in from the hard chine, but this particular vessel has a rounded hull shape, so we're actually going to move it in about five inches so that we can get a nice flat surface to mount the tab. I'm going to make sure that our angles are perfect. We want the trailing edge of the tab to be about three quarters of an inch above the running surface. So Kevin, if you'll hold that there, I'll mark some holes for you. Okay, now we can remove the tab and we're going to disassemble it again so that we can use our brackets to drill our final mounting location. All right, we've removed the actuator from the trim tab. Now we're going to hold the trim tab up where we marked our holes previously, and then we're going to pre-drill all of our holes. Now the fasteners that we're using are a number 14 self-tapping screw, so we're going to drill that with the proper size drill bit, which is a 3 16 drill bit. We're going to hold the upper bracket up against the transom where we created the outline so we can mark the holes for that next. Now the upper bracket has four holes in it. We have three mounting holes and then we have a hole where the wire actually passes through the upper bracket. The three mounting holes will be drilled with the 3 16 drill bit. Where the wire passes through must be drilled with the 3 8 drill bit. Now that we have all our holes pre-drilled, we're going to remove the tape and we're going to chamfer the holes slightly. Chamfering the holes prevents the gel coat from cracking as we tighten the fasteners. Now we're going to assemble our actuator to our tab and begin our installation. I've reassembled our blade and actuator assembly. 
When I put the lower fasteners on, I tightened all the lower fasteners. The upper mounting bracket, I just slid it onto the wire along with the seal, and that will facilitate the installation of the upper bracket. Now before we install the trim tab, we're going to apply some sealant in the area where we drilled the holes previously. The sealant that we're using is a marine grade sealant that is designed for underwater use. The particular one we're using is 3M5200. Now that we have our sealant applied, we're going to begin installing the fasteners for the tab. When you purchase the trim tab kit from Lenco Marine, all of the mounting, all of the required mounting hardware comes with the trim tab kit. All right, we're now going to pass the wire forward through the transom and then begin mounting the upper bracket. We're going to apply a, a small amount of sealant to the wire before we pass it through the transom. And we're going to leave a very small amount of slack in the wire so that as the actuator moves, it doesn't pull too tight on the wire. Now we're going to install the upper fastener that connects the actuator to the upper mounting bracket. Now that we've completed our trim tab installation, we're going to climb inside the boat, install our switch at the helm, and run some wires. All right, to connect our actuator to our extension harness, we have to insert the terminals on the actuator wires into this Deutsch connector. On one side of the Deutsch connector, there is a small number one. On the other side of the Deutsch connector, there is a small number two. The white wire always gets inserted into the number one position. The black wire always gets inserted to the number two position. So I'm going to begin by inserting the white wire. I'm going to insert the wire fully until I hear a very faint click indicating that it locked in place. Then I'm going to insert the black wire into the number two position, also ensuring that it locks in place. I'm going to make sure that my rubber seal is installed properly, and then I'm going to install the locking tab on the Deutsch connector. That helps to ensure that the Deutsch connector will be watertight after it's inserted into the extension harness. Now I'm going to insert the Deutsch connector fully into the extension harness, making sure that the lock engages so that I cannot pull the wires apart. All right, we, we've connected our actuator wires to our extension harnesses. Now one thing that you must note is that we need to mark the extension harnesses so we know which side is the starboard side and which side is the port side. We've already done that. So now we're going to pull the wires through the floor, up under the helm, and then begin making our connections to our switch. We finished pulling the wires through the floor, up under the helm. Now we're going to begin installing the switch to control our trim tabs. Two things to keep in mind when you're installing the switch. We need to drill a hole with a 2 and a 16th hole saw, and it requires about 4 inches of depth. When you're drilling, you want to make sure that there's no wires behind the area that you're going to drill so that we don't do any damage. This dash is already pre-drilled for us with the 2 and a 16th hole. Now Kevin's going to begin the installation of the switch. As Kevin completes the installation of the switch, he's going to hand tighten the bezel nut on the back of the switch to secure it in place. Our wire connections will be very simple. Kevin is connecting the wiring harness with the red tracers to the port side and connecting the wiring harness with the green tracers to the starboard side. Now Kevin is going to connect our power supply. The power pigtail should be connected through a 20 amp circuit breaker or fuse. All right, in order for the switch to function, we have to connect our orange ignition sense wire, and we usually recommend that you connect it to the accessory side of the key switch, but it can also be connected to a 12-volt on-off switch. All right, now we have our switch fully connected and powered up, and we're going to test the system to make sure that it works properly. When I press the buttons on the starboard side of the keypad, it operates the port side trim tab. Now I'm going to press the buttons on the port side of the keypad and make sure that it operates the starboard tab. Now I'm going to retract both of them and shut the system down.
All right, we've tested the system and it works perfectly. For more information, please visit our website, lencomarine.com.